To start off this year, I'm going to build a dust collection system to kind of help maintain all the dirt and debris that takes place when you're working in a wood shop. Let's get building. So initially I tried using one of these cyclone dust collection systems uh, that you add on to a five gallon bucket. And it, to be honest with you, it worked great. You know, it probably works just as good as the actual cyclone version. Um, this is just some Amazon uh, version that I found online. Uh, the problem I ran into was the actual bucket that we had it attached to. This is actually my second lid that I've tried using to attach to a five gallon bucket. Um, I cracked the first one as I was putting it on the lid. And with this one, when I went to check the, the bucket for the first time and I took it off, I cracked the lid again on the outside this time taking it off. So I decided we're just going to go with something completely different. I'm going to build a box that houses this and the vacuum and keeps it all nice and clean in the corner of the garage. Now I'd love to be able to outfit my garage with a full-on dust collection system. Uh, you know, that's the ideal future down the road kind of thing. But right now I just, just really don't have the space for that. And unplugging and moving from one tool to the next is fine for right now for what I'm doing because honestly, I only have the room for one or two tools out and, and, and set up at any time. So one tool that I've always said is really important when you're doing any kind of cabinetry type building or boxes or anything along those lines is going to be a pocket hole jig. You don't need to spend a lot of money on these. You can get one of the cheaper ones that are just a little handheld jig such as this one from Craig. Um, not endorsed by them, just I happen to have this Craig, it's Craig Jr. And um, this particular one runs 30, 40 bucks, uh, nothing spectacular but it'll get the job done. Now what's gonna cost you the most money is gonna be the clamping system to hold that down. And again, you don't need to spend a lot of money on that. Uh, just go, go to Harbor Freight and get yourself one of these clamps. Uh, they're usually run about five, six bucks when you get them on sale. Um, and they're really durable. Um, and they work just the same as the, the clamp that's made specifically for this, um, but she'll save you a whole lot of money. kidding me? Oh, how stupid. So I just drilled all those pocket holes into the wrong piece. It's been a long time since I've done this. Alright, something I like to do when I'm gluing up pieces like this is just go ahead and lay a piece of tape down. Along the edge for squeeze out. Just helps keep your surface clean. Yes, I know there are pocket holes here. I clearly drilled them in the wrong place when I was putting this together, or when I was laying it out. All right, so we learned from our mistakes, but. Uh, this one's turning out to be just chock full of them. Screw it. 
screwed straight into my table. So with this project, I ended up making a lot of mistakes, but you know, that's okay, because learning is doing, and uh, it's just one of those things that as you make mistakes, you learn from them. This is just a piece of shop furniture, so a few extra holes uh, visible to everybody that sees them is really not that big of a deal. I mean, after all, this is basically an oversized trash can. So, because of the pocket holes being wrong, and I don't actually have screws that will fit for what I need, we're just going to screw them in from the outside. All right, so we got the bottom plate put on. We'll go ahead and hold that in place. So now we're going to go ahead and put it in the middle shelf. And this shelf kind of does two things. It holds, keeps the box square and stable. Uh, but it's also going to be basically the bottom of the trash can. The vacuum is going to be underneath here. We're coming up 22 inches. Again, this piece does not go all the way to the back. It is just intended. To act as a spacer. It's not going to affect or shouldn't affect the suction power of the vacuum. Thought I missed that. Apparently, it's just a really soft spot in the plywood. All right, so you can see we got the vacuum fitting in here. Uh, the ductwork for the Cyclone will come up through this back side here and, and connect in. Uh, it'll also uh, uh, help keep the sound down in this. 
I'll put a vent out the back to let the air flow out of the back of the uh, box for the vacuum. And we'll go ahead and close this off with the box or close this off with a lid so that we can kind of dampen the sound a little bit. All right, so check the fit on this. I'm going to do use a technique that we use on the CNC for holding wood down, mainly because I can't get in here with a clamp and I really don't feel like shooting nails in or screwing it down just for a test fit. But essentially what I'm going to do is put tape on both sides of this and put some CA glue on here just to hold it in place while I fit the panel in. Just put a little dab in both sides. Usually doesn't take much, you know, about 10 seconds or so for the glue to really harden when you use the accelerant like that. And this panel right here is basically going to go on um, with Velcro or magnets or something along those lines. Let's put a handle to pull it on and off. The nice part about that, by using the tape, you know, when you put it on with CA glue, is it just pulls right off of the wood, and then you just peel it off the wood, off the uh, board that you just attached it to. This time, when I go to attach the board, I'm still going to use CA glue to just attack it down, but I'm going to fill the rest of it in with regular wood glue. And again, compared to the last time, I'm setting it back in just a little bit further than it was. And we'll go ahead and clamp that down. Give it a little bit of accelerant. And go ahead to the other side. So to finish up this project, we're going to go ahead and put a top on this, and that's what the Cyclone adapter is going to attach to. And it'll also basically make the lid for the trash can and help give it a seal. What I'm hoping is that by putting the plastic bag around this, um, we should be able to get a good enough seal. If not, we'll give it some weather stripping on it or something like that to seal up that box just to help keep the vacuum strong.
Look at that. So it's not the ideal solution. The screw basically pulled right on through and just busted that piece of aluminum right off. So I just stuck a washer on there for now and then I'll replace the part later on when I get a chance. To go ahead and cut out the hole for the cyclone, I'm just going to use a roll of tape. The hole is just a little bit larger, but it'll work for what we need. So with that, I'll just drill a hole in there and use the jigsaw and cut the hole out. this just go into recycling now I'm gonna go ahead and place the cyclone on the top here so that the hose is aiming out so that it's more usable in my workspace now I'm gonna go ahead and use some bathroom caulking to seal around this just to give it a, a good seal. Uh, try to cut down some, some of that airflow that goes through there. We want as, as much of a vacuum as possible of what's going into the bag. Again, uh, when we go to seal this up, putting the trash bag over the top of this to, to collect all the dust and then probably coming back with like some window sealer or something along that lines. Just to, hold, just to give it a good, nice, tight seal and uh, keep that as a nice, solid vacuum uh, should work out. Now these bolts that came with it are honestly probably too short. We're going to go ahead and set it into place and get at least the holes lined up and uh, worst case is I come back, come back and put in new bolts. Of course, it's a nice tight fit. So as you can see, the bolts that came with this thing don't even come through the wood. So I'm going to go ahead and back those out and put them in, put longer bolts in. So what we're going to do next is take our vacuum bucket and just get it in here and marked out. To run the lines out the back of the of the box so that we can uh, get it up to the top for airflow so be using one of these bucket vacuums find these at most big box stores a one and a half inch pipe actually fits perfectly into that Then we'll go ahead and drill an identical hole right next to it for the exhaust.
All right, so as I work on finishing up this project, I had to make a couple of changes, uh, partially due to uh, just lack of availability of hardware. Uh, I was gonna do magnets in the lower door just to latch that into place, but you know, local hardware store did not have what I needed. And the latch, as you saw previously, we attached, um, basically pulled the screw right on through and, and pulled the ring of aluminum off with it. So I just completely replaced those latches. And while I was at it, I went ahead and put a rubber seal around the top of the door. So let me go ahead and show you that. So I originally had these window hasps, because honestly that's all I could find was when I was in the hardware store. But when I went back looking for magnets, I found these, hatch, these latches right here, um, which I think gives it a better seal as I pull that door down. Now as I was installing this, you can kind of see the remnants of the screw that actually came with this latch. The head broke off of it as well. And I went ahead and replaced the latches on both sides. Now on the other side, I added this weather stripping around the outside edge and then just slightly inside so that when I put the lid back on, they overlap. Eventually I'll cut off this excess hose, but for now, I just want to go ahead and get it in there and make sure that we're getting a good vacuum. So for all the experts out there, they're probably thinking, okay, that shouldn't have worked because um, you put a trash bag in there that would have sucked the, back, the trash bag up inside the cyclone. And you're absolutely right about that. So one of the things that I did to solve that problem, and this is just a temporary solution for right now, is I actually took a trash, a uh, five gallon bucket and cut the bottom out. So eventually my plan is to actually build a slide that goes down inside the trash bag. Um, but for now that completes this build. I'm going to get the door put on the front when the magnets come in. And we'll get this thing put into place and start using it on the CNC and the other tools. Um, it sucked up all the dust and as far as I can tell it's in here. And it shouldn't be in the bottom. Uh, the, the bottom I shouldn't even have to get into for several months. You know, Just to change the filter every once in a while. So we'll probably see more of this project later on as we continue to modify it and add to it you know my intention is to basically uh, for the few items that I have to have a small dust collection system going uh, so I will run some some tubing that runs like to the miter saw and uh, have a hose that I can run out here to the table saw and things like that in the meantime it's a nice small compact solution that will fit nicely in the corner and doesn't take up as much space as a regular dust collection system. I hope you found the information in this build helpful. Uh, this is pretty simple, cost me about 150 bucks for all of the parts. That includes the lumber, the cyclone, and the hoses. Uh, the vacuum I already had, and you can do this with your own vacuum, but if you wanted to buy a shop vac like that, uh, it only costs about $25, $30 from your local home improvement store. If you like what you saw, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to hit that like button and also hit the bell so that you can be notified the next time we post content. Until next time, I'm Brad and this has been My Simple Builds.